good. Well, we've got a new guidebook. And how are we? I haven't, I haven't completely read it yet. So, so the so handwritten the, one is what we're doing today. We're going to do the best then, we can. And then if I have to make changes later on, we'll, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. But it, for the most part, if I make a decision while we're in play, we'll just keep that until well, yeah. next session or whatever, at least. Um, if not, just keep it for the campaign and then later on change it. But all right, guys, uh, let's go ahead and start the film whenever Elena's ready. Wait a minute. I'm waiting for it to show up on. Okay, I'm here. Why aren't we seeing something on the other side? Oh, that's why. Display capture. Okay, display capture two. Window capture. Capture Discord. Keepsakes Discord. Okay, that's me. Um, okay, it does say we're streaming now. Good. And let's get everybody up on the screen here. Not just one person. Come on. Members. Pop out. Now we'll change over to this window. I will be I will be mostly looking at my screen up here, but then I'll try to look down to you guys to speak. Try to remember to look at the laptop. Back in. Uh, I'm all over the place, man. I try to remember to look at the camera every now and then, but mostly I'm just everywhere else. Discord, Discord, Discord. I got all these notes uh, attached to my computer screen in a great big square. They're little little uh, post-its that I use to, to keep track of stuff that I'll likely forget if I don't. And this way I could just look directly ahead and see what the information I need and just be like, oh, that's over there, that's over there, that's over there. This thing has popped into a mode. Of course, there's so like. many of them I could get lost. There we go. Now we're Perfect. back. Okay. Full screen this. And now, come on. Let me see everybody. Wait, there we go. All right. And we're streaming. And we're ready to go. And Excellent. I should have got my, what do you call, BAPS brought up here. Um, but we can oh, start. Yeah. We are starting now. Okay. We are starting. Excellent. Hello, I'm Jason, and this is another rendition, our third episode of Keepsakes. Uh, we will go ahead and just introduce everybody right off the bat and uh, move on right on into it. Um, we have the adventure so far. Uh, we have collected uh, four different characters. Socks the Fox, run by Elena, who if, if Elena would like to uh, say anything about Socks the Fox, feel free to do so now. Well, if they were watching from the other session, um, Socks of Fox is a plush fox. Um, I will post a picture at some point, but um, it's about um, 18 inches long, 6 inches high, and um, I don't remember everything we did last session. I suppose that doesn't matter, but... Yeah, is a I'll plus do a box. brief recap before we start. All right. Um, this is good because every time I ask you guys about your characters, you do at least impart some small little tidbit of, of information. So it's worth bumping over and over and again. Yep. Uh, next, we'll hit up. Uh, we got made the utility knife. Would like to say anything about your character? This is Raleigh. Um, I'm a very broken tool, but I try to be useful. And then we have raindrop the doll. Played by Kat. Um, Raindrop is a handmade doll. She's, um, like I said, she's a handmade doll, and she is a little bit dirty because she got left out in the open. But she's hoping someday to be reunited with her girl. Excellent. And the recap for what we've done in the last two episodes. Um, to uh, make a longer story shorter than the last time I did a rendition of this, uh, our group met each other at the grounds, which is basically a massive playground for children. Um, within the grounds, they discovered other Wittershin, 
um, who invited them into their community and then told them about some tasks they could perform to help out. Uh, one of these tasks was to uh, rescue a toy robot named Ten from the bin, the garbage bin, uh, in which case they did. They, uh, they rescued the toy robot. Um, after having done so, they realized there was another task they could help out with, which was to uh, find a lost doll. Um, they then went off to try to find this doll, uh, having given, been given some minimal information that she was from a house in the nearby neighborhood. Having traveled over a dangerous road to do so, they make it to the house. And once inside, they came across a, a number of hurdles that got in the way of their investigation. Uh, they found themselves uh, face to face with a uh, a looming black cat um, that they have found to be named Elgato, or perhaps as the people call him, Shadow. Sh the shadow of the cat has been giving them a lot of trouble, attacking them on sight. Um, and at this particular point in the adventure, they have um, found something that they want to retrieve from a girl's room, but they're having trouble in doing so because... Uh, the cat is waiting for them. So at the point of the adventure that we're going to start at, Drifter of the RC car, who is played by Anthony, who is uh, a little late today. So if he does not make it on time, I will uh, figuratively take the wheel for the RC racer, and uh, we'll go from there. But our Drifter of the RC racer has uh, broken through a wall and uh, into the, the child's room. Uh, above, uh, Hang on a potted plant that was hanging from the roof, a, a hanging vine plant, uh, was uh, Ilgato, the cat, waiting uh, to pounce. And uh, apparently the cat has heard the sound of the race car hitting his Lego block uh, reinforced bumper against the, uh, the small hole that you guys were trying to make bigger so that, so that your Wittershin could crawl through. Uh, and he is ready to pounce even as the RC is successful and smashing the rest of the way through the hole in the wall. Now, if I remember correctly, I have uh, made the utility knife in the uh, back of the truck. Uh, was Raindrop and or Socks also in the truck this time? I don't think I was in the truck. Okay. Um, I, also, I have put a picture of socks in the corner on my stream, so if anybody wants to look at socks, it's what socks is. Excellent. Was a uh, raindrop in the back or off to the side? No, she was going to hold on to the um, bar. She's going to hang on to the bar over the back of the race car? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Maybe he's in the cab so that he couldn't get just snatched out and separated by the cat. Now, from his description, I believe he's an RC truck, so he's got like maybe a racer design to him. But um, yeah, we could say he's got a bar in the back. Um, Anthony can't complain because he's not here. Ha ha. Uh, so <laughs> you grab onto the bar in the back, and uh, you'll basically be legs out behind you, flying as the yes. the uh, truck takes off, really ramping through the through the uh, the hole in the wall with uh, great force, actually. A uh, a toy that his size has actually got uh, the power of a, a beefy toddler. So through you go through the hole you go, and as you do, the cat is jumping down at the same time. What would our characters like to do? Make sure I'm securely tucked inside of the cab. I see. Uh, before I go any further, too, um, have we already done our D10 stuff for the uh, start of the scene? No. 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 Excellent. Go ahead and do that. All right. Um, what is the rolling channel? We could use the rolling channel. If you'd like, you can use the rolling channel. You may use uh, maybe maybe uh, another favorite. laptop. It would, it would be with excellent. This. Right there next hey, to the next. Hey, where'd my picture channel. go? I didn't ask for this. Also, if you like, you can just roll physical dice. I trust you not to cheat. The only person who loses is you. If you treated a role playing game, right? All right. It's one. It's one d10, isn't it? It is one d10. But that is an excellent roll. Right. I will tell you in a roll. moment. Okay, we'll put what together. Got gotcha. you. So we'll take the first roll. We'll say is that that's your roll. Oh, okay. That's much better than the re-roll. You lost somebody. We lost. Unfortunately, I, I don't know what we're rolling about because my thingy was misbehaving. That's why I'm going towards um, not having video. 
Thanks yeah, so um, we had a momentary drop of everybody. I think it was just Discord. So, so are we all rolling, or was it just one of us? It's each of you will roll because it's the it's the beginning of the session stuff roll. Oh, that you do okay. At the beginning of every session, in order to get some stuff back for the new scene, I'm I am segregating the scenes between when you were in the hole, uh, behind the wall in relative safety to when you're entering this new room. Okay. I'm calling this a new scene because uh, this is where things get a little hairy for everybody again. And that was intentional. Okay, so we are rolling for our additional stuff. Okay. Give me a moment. I got a six. I'm re-logging in Discord on my laptop so I can do... Excellent. Okay, so once everybody's got their stuff figured out, just go ahead and tell me, uh, as soon as you're ready, what you'd like to do. I am securely in the cab. We've got made. He's hiding securely in the cab. Um, he's going to use the uh, RC to shield himself, I take it. Mm -hmm. Has the cat already pounced or anything? Or, or are we just... The action as stated is that the cat is basically pouncing down at you. The obvious intention of, of Shadow or Elgato uh, is to rend you all to pieces. So that is his objective. He, as he comes down, his his We're feline still in the hand rat hole, open right? up and long claws extend in, in ten different directions as he uh, leaps down at you. Can I? It, um, assuming he doesn't land on the car, I'd like to throw some pebbles to try to maybe make him lose his balance. Okay. You'd like to try that's, to throw some pebbles at him. Well, no, right? not at him. On the floor. So on the that floor. he basically so like the marble action. Yes, so that he won't have any... He'll be like... So having a, it's kind of a setup for what happens after the, the action that's already currently happening. So I'll say that uh, we'll make you make a separate roll. Okay. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it after... I got a this, nine. This one is taken care of. Uh, since this one might affect that one. All right, so you got a nine uh, yep. on your stuff roll, okay? And uh, have you decided what you'd like to do for your character? You're you're currently on the other side of the hole. The RC and Maid have uh, have and Raindrop have burst through the hole and are heading into the room. And even from where you are, you can see the cat leaping down from the potted plant. What would you like to do? Um, I'm gonna leap in front of the cat and bark at it. Fox bark. Okay, you're going to leap out and fox bark at the cat. Yeah, okay, maybe well, it's maybe it'll think that I'm a, I'm a dog or something. Okay, you're hoping a maybe to startle dog. the cat. Yes. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Mage, your action isn't uh, is to basically is basically going to put the uh, put the role on Drifter to not be injured because he's protecting you now. So, but yeah. uh, for socks. I will give you a roll against the cat to maybe maybe hinder its performance in attacking in the first place. So go ahead. I and had roll. eighty or forty. You, were, you are well. What were you last time? You were at forty. I believe I was at forty last time. Then you've gone up one step to eighty. Okay. For this, it's a new scene. So yes, uh, you are at eighty. So go back over here. Roll two d ten. One seven seventeen. Excellent. All right. As she uh, jumps forward and ferociously yips at the uh, descending black ball of terror, um, it got to his eyes. Uh, his great golden orbs widen for a moment, and he seems startled and at least distracted enough to uh, to put him off his game. I'm going to say that you have given uh, a bonus to. Uh, Drifter's attempt to avoid harm because that's what Drifter's going to do because uh, Anthony's not here. So he's going to try to okay. avoid harm. He's going to try to race right on past under the cat and uh, get himself and made to safety. Um, and let's see, I will now roll for Drifter.
Well, since um, Raindrop and Maid are with Drifter, can either of them give like a help action? Um, one of you has improved his chances, giving him an, a 90, but he rolled a 92, so he does need a little assistance. So, uh, what what is the uh, brain job's already got an action she's going to be doing? Uh, okay. The only person that could potentially help right now is probably made from inside the cap. Is there anything you can think of to try to it, as an assist mm -hmm. for teamwork? I will attempt to swing the door open just at the last second, just enough to you know kind of like bump the cat away. Just a, you know a, one more little thing to knock it off of its um, off of its access their game the paw a paw descends despite the cat's distraction uh razor sharp claws raking towards uh the undercarriage of drifter as uh as the cat descends from above and drifter kind of rises a little in his small hop and just at the moment when it was about to strike and maybe do some harm uh maid opens the door and kind of slams it into the cat's paw and closes the claws enough so they only just kind of graze and don't actually uh, dig in. And the cat lands with a bit of uh, catly grace, but let's see if that saves him from the pebbles that have been strewn about. So make a roll uh, raindrop against the cat. Jason, did you hear me? No. It was a 67. 67. I'm at 80, so at 80. it's below okay. my chance. All right. So the cat starts to land on its feet, and apparently all cats do that, uh, all the way up till <laughs> most of its feet land on pebbles, and they shoot out from under it, and the, the cat uh, gets, lets out a loud, sharp sound as it, it's, uh, it slams onto its side on the floor, momentarily stunned. Uh, but quickly starting to scrabble to get back up. What would your characters like to do at this point? I'm going to start to peck the kitty on the ears. I think this kitty can be calmed down. You want to pet the kitty? Yes! Okay. I think the kitty can be calmed down. All cats like it behind the ears. It's bold. I like it. Okay. Uh, what would everybody else like to do? Um... I think Raindrop is going to ask Drifter if he can talk to the cat. Okay. Maybe um, we'll just say, yeah, talk to it. Talk to it. You just want me to use Anthony's southern accent, don't you? Yeah, because right. uh, yeah. Cause, cause we're not trying to harm this family. We're just looking for some information about, about Anne and the girl. Is that sure I can talk to him? Yeah. What do you want me to say? Well, let him know what we want to do so that we can get out of it. Because the sooner we get the information we need, the sooner we'll get out of his hair. Oh, He's just defending done. his territory. Yeah, I, I, I never wanted to hurt the kitty anyway. I just, I mean, I just want to make sure we can do what we want to do. Maybe we could just get the kitty's permission. So let's start by, come, what do you call it, pet behind the ears. All right. So Jester looks at the cat, and he stops in uh, in his forward uh, in his forward momentum hard enough to make a uh, maid rattle around a little bit inside of his cab, and he uh, he just kind of looks over at the uh, at the the rising cat and says, "Hey, uh, kitty, it's not too late for us to you know start having a little talk, right? We can uh, we can work this out." And uh, the the cat uh, looks up at at uh, Drifter and. Okay, so the, the cat, its, it's eyes narrow, and uh, unfortunately the, re the remaining characters can't understand the conversation that's going on between uh, the cat and the toy RC, and since Anthony's not here, we're just going to say they have an exchange that you can't hear. 
In which case, after uh, speaking for a while, the cat eventually starts to back away. And uh, Drifter looks at the rest of you and says, I, I think we're all right for now. Well, then let's go. The cat uh, kind of gets low and then skulks away. Once it's sure that it's it's backed up enough and none of you are doing anything funny. I mean, I'm still just inside of Drifter, ready to be carried around. He he moves me around way faster than I move me. Well, uh, Drifter is in follow mode right now, so he's kind of looking to you guys for some leadership. Well, I just look over to Raindrop and to Fox and say, well, what do we do now? We should go check out the note and see if one of us can read it, because that's not me. I can't read it, but I think hey, somebody look. here can. Let's go. I think that's Raindrop that can read. Come back. We seem to have lost Raindrop at that opportune moment. Here she is. We have Raindrop. For some reason, that kicks off my What did it happen? There we go. I mean, I know what happened on my end. I just don't know what happened as a result of talking to the cat. Okay, the cat did, in fact, back off after... Uh, Drifter did uh, his best at making peace. And uh, after backing up a few steps and making sure that none of you were going to do anything further, uh, the cat skulked away, left the room. Uh, now the group was discussing um, the letter that was up on the desk that uh, Socks made clear that she could not read. Um, at least not what that was. I believe Raindrop should be able to. That's what we are thinking. Excellent. Well, after climbing up to the top of the desk, you do in, find, in fact find the, uh, the note. And it is in fact written in a language that Raindrop can translate. Uh, Raindrop recogni recognizes this as the, the, uh, the language that, uh, that or, or a language that she has been familiar with in the past. Uh, she's seen a lot of people in her travels. And as she reads it, she uh, realizes that it is a note from a little girl saying that she's leaving home in search for her Sally. Mm -hmm. She ran away. We need to she go find her. her the note tells her mother not to worry and that she'll be back soon, as soon as she's found her beloved Sally. How long ago can we get it... Um... Um, estimate of how long ago this was written? Well, well tears being, seem pretty fresh. Being as it has tear stains on it and socks is very, is inunuated in tears, this note doesn't feel very old. All right, then. Mm. I think that there is still a chance to find her, and we should go find her. This is the... And return her Sally. Yes, that's her, what, what, her actual name there? Okay. Return her. Do we think that. Do you think perhaps El Auto might have any information about where Sally went or where um, the little girl started? Maybe he knows which direction she went? Let's ask. Your I characters haven't had turn. much of a. haven't had a much of a rapport with, uh, with El Gato so far. Uh, if you wish to try to find uh, to talk to him, you'll have to find him again because he's skulked away and you currently don't know where he is. Maybe we just oh, you know oh, get oh, out oh, of oh, Elgato's oh, house. Yeah, I think that we we know what we need to do. I don't think Elgato is going to know what direction. I don't think Elgato is an outdoor is kitty. Because now what? that we know what that looks like, does anybody I'm good right. at tracking? I might be able to do. I might be able to track. I track. I bet I can track tears. I never tried, but could I? I'll try. I used to have a compass, but it's all smashed. All right. Yeah, you you consider tracking the girl? How would you like to start with that? Um, tracking by tears. Um, I'm pretty sure that she didn't stop crying when she broke the snow. 
Sox searches for tears. Uh, after a few moments, Sox realizes, well, tears have a tendency of drying up. It makes them very hard to track after a really short amount of time. All right. If only you had some kind of tool that would allow you to track unseen tears. Hmm. Hmm. Do I? Do I? Do I? Do I? Do I? I'm going to find out because I have my sheet right here. I have a flashlight, but I don't know if that will help us see unseen tears. I think it just helps us see things that are harder to see. I have a fairy pendant. I have my key, but mine's a mystery key. Well, um... Um, the other two a button help. that allows her to see things. Would me her button be helpful? Would you like to use a stuff and uh, stare around with the button to try to find dried tears? Yes. Excellent. When you uh, focus through the button, with your intention being to see dried tears, you find them. Why don't we see the GM? Okay, so I will tell everybody where the tears are, where they are. Now you do find tears. a lot of a lot of tears in this house lately, and it takes some time to find the tears that lead to the door. Now I will say this will require a chance roll as your characters attempt to track the tears. Okay. I'm wondering if perhaps Socks a, can uh, help me since her stuff, since, her, since tears are her specialty, so. so maybe she'll be, be able, able to, to help me. Out some. Well, normally, I would say this is hard, but because Socks is helping you, I'll, I'll drop it to normal difficulty. 22. All right. With the two of them working together, you are able, uh, as a group, to uh, f follow the tears uh, out of the house through the um, through the door. Uh, as you get out to the street, um, you can see that the tears are getting a little further apart, but they're traveling down the sidewalk. I can barely hear you, Jason. Ah, uh, is my is my volume gotten lower? It Everybody must be because my phone is on full volume. And I can... You're also off camera. Yeah, I know I'm off camera. I turned my camera off to hopefully help with the uh, video problems we were having with Kat. All right. I'll turn it back on. Oh, I just don't have internet. That's why I had to go with my phone. Your okay. volume's fine for me. Uh, is my volume still low? I can yes. hear you fine. Okay, cool. But yeah, I, it's because I don't have... All right. Excellent. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and go back to what we were doing there then. Uh, you guys see off down the, the sidewalk going down the street, you can see the trail of tears. Uh, they are becoming a little wider apart. It gets quite difficult, but, but with the teamwork that you have, you are able to follow them. What would you like to do? Drifter makes it clear that he's okay with uh, with all of you being in the, in the back, and he can ride along, try to go a little faster, if you want to try to follow down the sidewalk. Yeah, I want to follow. I'll ride on. Mm -hmm the truck right the the road that runs between the houses is uh is kind of devoid of any kind of traffic it's not like the highway uh but um you do see some headlights coming up eventually drifter darts off into the bushes with you guys to to uh, avoid being seen by anybody that's traveling on, down the road and after the car is gone uh before before Drif drifter can quite pull himself out of the bushes you all suddenly hear a voice um, what's this? Says a little girl's voice. Uh, and you recognize the language raindrop. It's, it's, uh, once again, they're speaking in Spanish. So the other, uh, our other, uh, waiters are unable to understand. I'm going to try to go back to my computer. Okay. But the little girl stoops down next to the, uh, 
the fallen Wittershin, and she starts looking them over, turning them over one at a time. She says, "Why? Why is there a tool jammed in here?" And she uh, she <laughs> reaches into into uh, into Drifter and, and yanks uh, made out, starts turning her over and turning him over in her hand. Um, she is the little girl is is dusty and dirty. Her knees have got mud on them, and her dress is is dirty. Um, you can see she's got uh, mud in her elbows too, like she's been crawling around. Perhaps uh, she's got leaves in her hair. Uh, she she looks over each of the uh, Wittershin in the bush, and, and she's she uh, she kind of well. Does she have a pocket? Roll roll chance with no penalty for failure. Uh, or sorry, no no uh, penalty for success. Uh, made because this affects you. Okay, and as she's like turning me around, do I happen to see if the doll we're looking for is about her person anywhere? You don't. You don't see anything on her person. Ah. And hopefully, hopefully, you see a pocket. Oh, it, this is a two D ten. Yes, two D ten. This one. One the usually the first die for the tens and the second die for the ones. Mm -hmm. okay. I rolled a forty-two. Forty-two, and I do believe that's still under what you need. I was at yeah, I was at forty at the end of last session, so I was at eighty now. All right, excellent. She just happens to have a a large pocket sewn into the front of her dress, and she just kind of tucks the utility knife there. And then uh, she picks up the uh, two dolls and the RC truck. Um, she takes some time looking over socks and looking over raindrop. And she said, "In raindrop, you're aware that she says it's so strange finding so many dolls, but no Sally." And she tucks both of the dolls under one arm, and she's kind of looking at the truck. She's like, "Where did this come from?" And uh, she she's walking back uh, along the sidewalk, and you could tell she's walking back toward in the direction you guys came from. What would you like to do? Nothing. I'm gonna let her keep carrying me. Is, is the pocket? I, they said the pocket's like in the front. So like, if I tried to do anything. Like say, turn on my flashlight and point it. I wouldn't be able to just like turn it on and point it behind us to make sure they could see or anything like that, right? Well, if you turn on like, a, a flashlight inside the pocket, it's gonna just kind of like light up the pocket, and it might make a glow on the pocket or maybe even a little through the pocket. But it's, it's a very small light, so it wouldn't wouldn't go very far. And and okay, yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, I'm I'm very. I'm now. Can Wittershin talk to each other without being heard or by the humans, or would they hear us talking? I'm. I, I made a ruling last time that as long as you speak to each other uh, without the intent of being heard or in the direct presence of people, that mm -hmm. you'd be fine. But I think that that being held by her is probably a probably a time to be quiet because if you speak now there's a chance she might hear you right except for raindrop actually can be understood by humans if she wants to be she can be and if she desires to she can speak to them. it's very so, dangerous but she can do that. yes that's why she wanted to talk to her companions before doing so well if the child is special she might understand you if not she might miss it you won't know until you start speaking. <laughs> so I'm thinking right now, just observe. All right. And listening. Good. One stuff for you. All right. You guys uh, continue walking along. Uh, and after she's walked for a few paces, she comes up to a trash can and she stops. And you can see she's considering... And she looks at all of you. She looks at the, uh, the two dolls. She's still got tucked under her arm, but she seems to give Drifter a little thought with the trash can. And she definitely looks down into her pocket. 
for a moment. And she and she pulls Maid out. She's like, and Raindrop hears her say, "It is broken." But after but a moment, she puts good. she puts it back in her pocket, and uh, she continues walking with all these things. And uh, as you as you walk away, all of you can make a uh, chance check for me. Each of you to do the same thing. Okay. So I'll keep it hidden what it is, and I'll tell you what it is if you succeed. Three. All right, a three is very good. Okay. This is so a one d ten or two d ten. This is two d ten. It, it is a chance roll, so it goes off your chance, your current chance. I failed. 88. Zero, oh. one. One. <laughs> All right. So, Maid, you get to go up a step, and the other two, uh, you have succeeded. Uh, you see, as you move away from the, uh, the trash bin, um, you see something stir in the darkness of the bin and peer out at you. Um, looks like a set of eyes. Uh, and and especially uh, raindrop does rain raindrop uses button eyes to to see yes. around her token. They look like buttons. And uh, as you guys head off, uh, that that's what you saw. Um, she continues moving all the way to the house. In which case, she uh, she okay. stops right in front of the house. Okay. Raindrop is going to take a huge risk. And say, to try to make it have the little girls, basically try to make it so it seems like it's from the little girl, her own thoughts, not from Raindrop. But she's going to try to say, if I wanted to throw something away, maybe somebody threw away my dolly. Hmm. Okay. Uh, roll chance. This is hard. Yeah, I know. So basically, it's almost going to be. So, so it basically, it makes the difficulty of the chance uh, minus ten. Yeah, I know. And I'm already at a. I failed. I had okay. to get a. Had to get zero. You go up a. You go up a rank on chance, and when you speak, the little girl's eyes widen. And she throws you down, you both of the dolls, actually. She throws you both down and drops the RC. And you say, ay, caramba! And she just uh, looks at both of you in and, and, and shock. And uh, does anyone move or do anything? No. Okay, she, I'm still trying to make her think that was her thoughts. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so not uh, going to make any moves. You get the impression she heard a voice and realized it wasn't hers, and uh, it wasn't her thoughts. And she she's uh, she's a little paranoid right now. She moves up and she pokes pokes the dolls and pokes the truck. And uh, and after a few moments, uh, if no one does anything, then she will may see like may doesn't know what's in the trash can or anything right i mean from inside the pocket you were in a pocket <laughs> i'm just oblivious to the entire world it was because you were in, the in a row yeah. it's because you were in the pocket that's all it was my plan is when i was thrown down to roll over closer to the garbage can and okay. come to a stop there just look like make it look like i'm naturally rolling in the direction that she threw me well, I, that's actually that sounds feasible. I'll make that a normal challenge. You go ahead and roll a chance. Yeah, and, and if she's like bending down to poke the the dolls in the truck, is there a, a chance that Maid could try to escape and it would be like he fell out of the pocket just naturally? Since she jumped, sure. Roll chance is a normal difficulty as well. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> roll two d ten. What's our result? Come on, baby. Zero eight. I'm not doing bad today. Well done. Twenty four. With a couple of rolls, Sox manages to roll off of the step that he was dropped on and into the bushes. Maid succeeded in falling out of the pocket. Because of her stealthy nature, we will say that Sox does not make noise as she rustles the bush in her escape. 
maid, however, is not having any natural such inclination. He he uh, he was successful though in uh, jumping away and rolling into the dirt, finding a soft patch to land on, so he didn't hit the sidewalk and make a loud clink or anything desperately noisy like that. Uh, and the both of you have a, have sort of at least for the moment escaped the child. As she looks around and realizes the other two have gone missing, and um, maybe he's a little bit more weirded out that there's only these two now. I she want to raindrop, and, and raindrop can hear her say, what, "What's going on here?" I just and she starts looking around. She'll she will move around and start looking for you. Uh, would you like to move away, or do you do you? Try I want to investigate or? the eyes. Okay, so you start stealthily moving back towards the trash can. All right. Uh, the little girl will stop her search after just a few moments. What is Maid doing during this time? Is he just hiding in place, or? I mean, if it seems safe, then yes. It's just trying not to be noticed. Drifter Waiting. has decided to, to stay still and quiet as he does not trust his stealthing ability, as it's been not very great lately. So uh, Maid will, will very quietly wait in the bush, and Dritcher will just lay there, and Raindrop seems to be following the same plan. After a few moments, she will just pick those two back up. She's got Raindrop, and she's got Drifter. And then she will enter the house, opening the door that was not locked, and walking inside. Okay. Uh, I'm when, trying to get. Go ahead. I was going to say, when she bends over to pick them up, is there a way for Maid to make a little bit of noise so it seems like he fell out as she bent over that time and she might notice him? You know what? Uh, she He already got away stealth wise, so I'm not going to make you make a chance roll on that. Uh, he could just go drop himself on top of the stone step, and she will look back at the noise and be like, oh. Oops, and she reaches down and picks up Maid and puts her back in her pocket. So you yeah. have successfully stealthed and unstealthed yourself. <laughs> and you, and right. you, you prevented your own escape. I'm a bastard. <laughs> All right. As, let's go to the socks real quick as she rushes back towards the bin. It was a lot further away than you realized. The little girl's stride was a lot bigger than yours. Uh, so your friends might have to deal with, with her on their own without you for a little while. Is Socks going to continue? For now, yeah. Okay. So Socks scampers on down the sidewalk towards where the bin was. The little girl goes inside with uh, the three toys in her possession. Um, in which case, uh, well, one of them's not technically a toy. Sorry, maid. Your utility knife. Toys and a utility knife. And then she will uh, walk in and uh, walk back up the steps. And as she's going up the steps, um, she's she seems to be kind of pensive and worried, and and you can see she's doing her own stealth. She's she's trying not to make a lot of noise as she goes up, and then she gets back to her room, and she seems to stop and listen a few times, especially to the room across from hers. And then she uh, she takes the toys she's got and she she lays them all out on the floor just right next to her bed. Um, with the for the utility knife, she pulls that out of her pocket, and she sets that on her table, right where the note used to be. And she looks around a little bit, and then she lays into her bed, and she starts getting comfy, leaves and dirt and mud and all, and uh, just kind of pulls the blankets over herself and starts to rest. Okay, as Raindrop is going to listen, and as soon as she thinks that the little girl is asleep. She's going to make her way over to the desk so that she's providing a soft landing place for Maid. So Maid can fall off the desk without making a huge clunk on the floor. All right. Rolling over there is actually pretty easy. There's nothing really contesting you. You roll on over there and Maid could jump off on and onto you as at will. Uh, Done. Additionally, as you do so, the little girl rolls over in her, in her rest, and you can see as you get off the kind of at an angle from the top of the bed, so you can see up there, that she's got a pendant on uh, around her neck. It's got like a strange little piece of metal on it. Do okay. I recognize what the metal is? 
you can't quite make it out. It just looks like you, from where, where you are and how far away you are, you can tell it's a, it's a pendant and it's got a piece of metal on it. Maybe some kind of ornamental design or something. You can't really tell from here. Okay. Now, if you wanted to climb up and look at it, you can do that. Now, we need to get away and try to help that literation out of the trash can. Because we know the bins are bad. And Fox isn't with us. All right. Uh, the RC racer looks around and notices that the child seems to have stopped uh, being awake and present of you guys' company. And he will slowly start wheeling his way towards the door. Come on, guys. Wait for me. Okay. Hop in. All right. Uh, Maid rolls off of the top of the de the desk and uh, almost completely quietly bounces off of Raindrop. And then the two of them uh, scuttle on over and jump in the back of Drifter. And then Drifter slowly wheels out of the room and very carefully bumps and down the stairs, letting his out. rubber wheels and absorb the impact. Sorry about that. You the impact. Shut the up. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Uh, after getting down to the end of the stairs, you guys make it back out through the ca a, uh, the cat door. And, uh, well, around this time is when Socks has made her way to the bin. Socks, what do you do to get into the bin? Crawl. Crawl? Okay. Yep. This, this bin is not like the one you saw before. The other one was great and boxy and mountainous and made of heavy metals and green and this one is 10 colored and short and you know you feel like you could probably climb it if you really wanted to uh so let's go ahead and give you a chance to climb the bin i won't give you any real uh real penalty for failure on this you'll just kind of bump back yeah. to the ground yeah i'm on 40 right now um that room again all right gods be with me roll oh come on roll. two d10 i did not succeed that time i got an 87 okay uh socks begin scrabbling up the side of the bin and bounces back a couple times trying to climb to the top just Shoot these little boxy doll arms and their inability to really grasp things. Um, as the others make it on the back of the RC, you can see that Sox is trying to uh, crawl into the bin. But you're all back together again in front of the bin. Well, we've done this before with a much bigger one, so we should know how to do it for the smaller one. I was kind of wondering if maybe... This one looks so much smaller. Maybe there's a way we could just knock it over and then we don't have to, you know, all climb in and out and do all of that. Right about the time you start thinking about that, actually, the can starts to rattle. It shakes, wobbles, and begins to spin in a circular pattern, rotating off of the base of the can over time until eventually it falls away from all of you, showing the, you the bottom of the can as its contents spill on the ground in the alley, alleyway beyond. I mean, very quickly rush to the other side and turn on my flashlight arm and then point it in towards the refuse to see what I can see. As Maid rushes up beside the can to see what happened, he sees that down the, in the dark alleyway there is the sound of a scampering feet and he sees the back of a very red-headed doll disappear around the corner, running at high speeds. I tell them what I see. Okay, Drifter, to the chase. Yes, Drifter, follow that Wittershin. Right, just says I'm on it, and he and he no, uh, he ramps up over to you guys, and then and, and stops with a screech of wheels for you to jump on. And um, as we're because I know that Wittershin can hear Wittershin without. Humans hearing Wittershin, I'll call out to her in the Wittershin speak and call the name Anne. 
All right, there is no reply. Uh, Drifter is going to take off after her. Wh which way she go? I point the right All right, he he turns and and starts uh starts following uh, behind the houses, uh, which is where the alley leads to. Uh, there is a a low hill, like leaning downwards, and so you guys are going downhill as soon as you pass the house. Oh yeah. yeah. And he I'll starts. I'll get my button out. He starts to get some good speed. It. And uh, up with your button, you can see um, as it as it kind of expands your view, like a like a magnifying glass. Uh, you can see up ahead in the distance. There is a uh, there is a little red headed doll running away from you, heading towards the heading towards the uh, the grounds with all the the uh, the the slide and the uh, the the other things of people architecture that you guys don't quite understand, but you understand that children use for fun. Do you just drive on after her? If, so yeah, if I saw that they were heading, you. if I saw that she was heading towards the grounds, I would call back to the others and say she I, she's going to the grounds. Let's let's just go there too. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to call follow. and say Granny Beans asked us to look for you. All right. Well, you're having to shout at her because she she actually got a bit of a distance a bit of a distance between you. Okay. But but you can shout that at her. Uh, she just doesn't respond. Um, the little Wittershin is running it as fast as she can. Um, she's and outrunning it. She's very fast if she can outrun Drifter. You're all you're all relatively as fast as each other. So Drifter is about as fast as Raindrop is about as fast as Socks, etc. But uh, okay. we'll, we'll say we'll say if, if if Drifter would like to make a token or a ritual or something to increase his actual speed, we can we could probably work on that. But as far as I know, he's he's just as fast as everybody else. Um, she's just got a lot of lead on you. So you guys follow her, and uh, she she disappears up under the uh, the the octagonal structure. Okay. Follow down. All right. You uh, you go to the pole, the one with the big hole in it, and you, you see a set of tracks lead all the way up to the pole, and then just kind of like veer around it. And veer around it. So she doesn't because actually the, go into the, it. The sand is really soft here. It's really easy to see the, the, these fresh tracks. So she didn't go down the hole? You can stipulate that she might not have. Yeah. Because we're looking for her. So what are her tracks? We're trying to follow her. I mean, do, like, do we see them go farther at all, or just like, a, like all the way around the pole, so that now it's completely obscured just by the opposite side of the pole? Well, you or like off to the side a little. What you observe is that the the tracks run right up to the pole, but then they they go around the pole, hugging the pole itself, almost like they're just like really close to it. Okay, so I she's trying to make it look it. like she went there. And are are you? If, you're here. Grand Bean sent us to find you. We're not. We don't. We don't want to hurt you. Um, we're. We're coming back here as well. Um, we're just gonna hop down to the big white pad thing and, and hopefully find a home. We're all new here. I wonder if she doesn't want to be here either. You all realize that this uh, this noise you haven't realized you've been hearing stops for a moment, and then just continues. And you realize that that's not, that's the sound of two little feet running really fast. Um, I want to ask her what what she's running from. Like we need to catch up with her first. Uh, well, uh, we'll I, are you guys all standing at the front of the poles, just kind of shouting around it, or do any of you move well, around? I, I definitely well, I, I would be looking. Okay, if you move around, if you move around the pole, you can see she's she's taken off. She's uh she's got some good distance now. She's uh she. It seems like she might have hesitated a moment there, but that she's just uh, she's continuing on. And you can I'm see gonna... past her that there is a big wood line, and that seems to be where she's heading. Okay, I'm gonna head towards it. So I'm oh. gonna I'm gonna run after her. 
All right, Raindrop yeah, jumps out of the back of Drifter and starts running after her. Drifter's like, hey, wait for me! And he uh, he takes off, too. What? I, I want to yeah, ask just... her what's wrong. We haven't yeah. gotten to her yet. Yeah, but she's yelling at us. No, she's not. And she's as just... you guys go taking off after her, following her, um, you hear a sound uh, from off to the side. And you look and you see this, this uh, a familiar, uh, familiar person, uh, a lollipop stick sticking up out of the sand looking at you guys with the painted on face hey where are you, where are you guys going don't go we found there. her we're, we're chasing her down um can you um i'm gonna ask the popsicle popsicle stick um um do that do do you know why the this doll is running away what has her so scared uh, he just shakes his head. We, we don't get scared, really. I, I don't know what she's doing. Yeah, I don't understand it either. Why are you telling us not to go towards the woods? Oh, that's the wood. It's dangerous there. You, you'll get destroyed by the great winged one. Oh, wait, what, what? Oh, the great winged one. He passes over the grounds occasionally looking for... What are you going to get? If you go in the woods... You're going to have a hard time find, uh, hiding from him. That's where he lives. And we definitely need to go help Anne. And she, she's running that way. Well, uh, I'll, I'll go tell Granby. Maybe we can send some reinforcements. Yes, please. Good the, idea. Uh, he, he seems to like, like kind of squint and peer after Anne. Yeah, it looks like Anne's red hair. Go get her then. All right, we'll. I'll keep chasing. I just yep. hope to find. Out. I. I don't like the idea of chasing her and making her more scared. I'm trying to fix that. That might. You might have a point. Maybe we need to stop at the edge of the woods and let her come to us rather than pursuing her in, because that's let's just going to make that. her go deeper in. Yeah, let's do that. Because right. I think we're scaring her, and I—I I mean, that's not so, going to get us to her. So the consensus strategy is to uh, to stop outside of the woods and wait for her, and, and hope that she stops running. Yes. All right. She unfortunately that does not seem to be what's driving her. She goes right into the woods and disappears. Hmm. That's very strange. It is. And we should we should follow her. She seems to know where she's going and what she's doing. I wonder if there is something wrong with her. There must or be. Or something right? Well, there's something off. Is that enough? She's I... not behaving as one would expect. Because she shouldn't fear us. Yes, true. She should recognize us as one of her... Kin. But what if she's not afraid of us? What if she just has something else good that she's running towards that's in the woods? Okay, I got my nose to the ground. I'm going to try to track the, what do you call it? Try, try to track her. All right. So uh, we got Socks trying to track her. Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, the, the sand in the uh, grounds is pretty soft for the most right. part. I mean, there's areas with firm ground. But mostly it's soft, so she she made a pretty hefty trail of, of kind of like shuffling, um, blunted doll feet. So uh, it was it's not hard to follow her, uh, and you just saw her like go straight into the woods. She doesn't feel like she has any deviancy to her uh, to her direction. She seems to be just heading straight to, uh, do that way. Um, she okay. might turn once she's in the woods, though. So I mean, uh, the longer you don't have sight on her, you feel the the more likely that you'll end up losing her. Okay, then I'm going to be listening recently. for either her or anything that is dangerous because we were warned that the woods might be dangerous. So I want to be alert and listening. All right. So Drifter's got his lights on on the ground in front of us, but we were told it was a winged one, and I would think that could be up in the sky. So I'm going to be just shining my light up into the sky as we come into the woods trying to keep an eye up above us with the light 
you shine your light straight up and you don't see anything at the moment. Soxy is re reminded of that thing that she saw when you were near the road, though. It's wingspan blotting out. Oh, the moon. that burb. Okay. It's wingspan blotting out the moon for a few moments and uh, encompassing the entire group in shadow. Just saying. All right, as you guys get to the to the woods, uh, you move inside and you see what, what you would expect to see. Lots of trees, uh, so lots of um, mulchy, leaf-laden ground. Uh, it's it's a little uh, it, it's a little difficult for Drifter. He's kind of like having to like lift his wheels constantly to get through it because it's it's not uh, not suitable for his terrain for him to ride over the top of very easily, especially when uh, there's a lot of stones and sticks in the way. Um, there's a lot of low bushes here that for you guys are, are a, a bit of a, a hindrance. You have to go around them sometimes, travel through the woods. How would you like to handle this? Maid's probably having all kinds of trouble if he decides to walk on foot. Yeah, I'm I wondering. Just assumed I he was drive. He was riding in the car. Yeah, yeah. could I could I help um, by? shooting the line forward so that he could just, you know, pull himself more across it using his, his his toe line instead of just having to use normal locomotive powers. What do you want to attach to, like trees, like shoot trees? and, and Yeah, just other big, tall things that are in the way in front of us that it might stick onto, you know, a, a root or, you know, a little small tree that's starting to grow up or just whatever. Maid gets the idea for a harpoon gun and begins fashioning it with what the resources he already has. Uh, it, it'd be pretty simple, actually. Uh, and uh, after a few moments, uh, he can he can kind of like catch the trees and pull Maid a uh, drifter along. Let's see how successful you are. Go ahead and roll a chance. I knew you would. <laughs> Where am I? I'm at forty six right now. So. I got a two. Good a two. job. Excellent. In a stunning display of mechanical prowess, Maid lifts his handmade harpoon gun, and which was his crossbow, and fires the uh, fires it into one tree after the other, attaching it to the line in the back of Maid, letting him just pull himself to the next tree. And in this way, he's able to not only travel much more quickly over the debris strewn woods, but he can actually bypass some things that normally he couldn't. Uh, there's a setback every now and then when Maid gets stuck, or uh, Drifter gets stuck on something like a low-laying limb. But it, it, Drifter's able to help for his own part, uh, turning his wheels in whatever direction is necessary to kind of pop himself over them. Uh, and in this way, you can actually make very good progress. Uh, with anyone who wants to ride in the back, uh, you can actually help the whole group move much more quickly. Well, observing that they're doing that, uh, Drop will get in the car. One stuff to made for being useful. Uh, as you guys get in the car, uh, <laughs> you find that the, the trip is much easier uh, doing it this way. Though it is a little, uh, what's the word, exciting? Because occasionally yeah. uh, you fly through the air as he fires it just a little too high and uh, and uh, Drifter gets a little bit too excited with pulling in his tow line, and you guys go sailing through the air over something, uh, and and then land back on his wheels, uh, more or less safe and sound, but maybe jostling all of his contents. Uh, good thing you guys are very resistant to uh, being bludgeoned. I As you uh, go ahead, I said I am full of stuffing, so I don't know how being bludgeoned works. Perfect for it. As you guys uh, continue moving through the woods, you do hear, uh, or at least you do not hear, the sounds of the woods that you had heard when you first entered. Everything is going very quiet. Hmm. Okay. My ears are fully raised in this situation. Whether I can hear anything or not, I'm listening. I'm going to look through my button and see if there's anything I see. 
to turn off my flashlight and not shoot the net propel rope thing. And I'm going to tell Drifter to stop and turn off his lights. Okay. And to just everybody just get quiet and still. You tell everybody gets quiet in the woods and everybody gets really cautious. Uh, this is perfect because I, and you, the fact that you pulled the button out now is perfect too. Um, you look through the button and it, it kind of magnifies. And what you see is a very large creature swooping down from the sky down on your group. Uh, and because you're using the, your little bifocal button, it seems to be right in front of your face. I warned them that Object the bird is coming. Is, the, is it the burb? You're all aware there's a burb coming down at you right now. It's, it's sweeping down. There are massive talons that are opening up. As two great luminescent eyes look down at you. Okay, I'm going to try to hop on top of the burb. I was okay. going to throw some pebbles at the burb. All right. To try one to. Of the, one of us are jumping um, on for rodeo. The other one's throwing pebbles. Just to basically distract it. Right. Drifter's going to opt for escape. Uh, what is Maid going to do? Maid was saying hide. But he's on Drifter, so if Drifter starts making an escape, he's just going to hunker down and and hope for the best. Hunker down he's and got hope for the, the best. He's got the harpoon with the rope on it ready just in case they need to like get up over anything. Or for the worst of the worst, should he need to try to wrap it around the bird's talon or something like that. To, to go with them in case some of the rest of the party is picked up and they need to try to stick together. All right, let's let's handle the uh, let's handle the one who's who's uh, trying some owl rodeo first. Uh, so stocks, let's let's get a, a uh, roll from you and chance on on getting on the back of this beast. All right, well I'm back up at eighty, so let's um, hope for the best. Nothing like failure to brighten your day. Hmm. Nothing. 41. There's a four in it. So There is a four in it. A yeah. 41? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, well... Throwing pebbles. I am going to, uh, as a result of that 41, dynamically affect your rodeo effect, and then I will let Raindrop maybe change your action based on what happened with that. How about that? So what's going to happen is you jump on top of the owl, and once Socks is up there, the owl's flight has been kind of altered. You you shifted your weight a little bit in the effort of trying to grab on. That one wing went down further than the other, and the the owl veers wildly off course. So it's going to completely miss the whole group now. Uh, it, does Raindrop still want to throw pebbles? No, because uh, she didn't want to hit okay. Socks, and the whole point was to try to distract the owl away from the group. So now they've got to worry about socks. Socks, you are now astride an owl. The moment the owl realizes that you have gotten astride of it, it straightens its wings out and begins to gain altitude. Whee! Going almost I'm directly sorry. up. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not trying to harm the creature as much as attach us to it and either All right. try to lasso its. A uh, leg with a harpoon. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead and make a chance roll. The, the, I'll help him by guiding him with by looking through the button. Don't roll a four and a failure is all I have to say. You don't want to hit socks. Yeah, I'm at twenty, so this is going to be tough. Just don't roll a twenty-four. Yeah, don't, don't roll, roll a, a forty-four. I think, does it get worse for the more fours? Gotta ask Kid about that. We'll say yes. yes. They don't like the rule of like four. fours. Yeah, we'll say we'll make more four. Zero one. Zero one. Check the chat. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yes, I'm watching it. So, as the owl <laughs> begins to gain altitude, flying almost directly up with her, uh, I'm not sure which one of you has captured the other, but as she's going up, uh, <laughs> the harpoon gun is fired from the uh, masterful maid. And it swings around and ties itself fast to the talon of the creature, yanking the owl into a sudden stop. Drifter goes up on two wheels. He's like, hey, where are you at, buddy? <laughs> She's bigger than me. She's bigger Drive than me. Drive around the tree. Drive around the tree. 
And now Jitter is being two-wheel rolled along the forest floor, but the owl is not gaining any more altitude. Steer right. yourself to a tree. We got <laughs> we got the Sorry, real drifter. Here's the real drifter. Drifter, you you came into a confrontation with a massive winged beast in the forest as you were chasing the red-headed doll <laughs> you've been trying to acquire. As as your uh, fox the socks. Uh, courageously jumped onto the back of the owl to attempt to stop its attack and then got um, carried away by the owl, made the utility knife, fired a, uh, a harpoon with a string attached to grab onto the, the owl's leg. What this uh, particular harpoon in pulley system is attached to Victor. So Victor is now attached to the owl, which is trying to fly away um, and has lifted his back two wheels off the ground and is currently dragging his other two wheels along the forest floor. Everybody, what would you like to do in this scenario? Um, this is so crazy. I think it might be time to bring out the irrational die. I think I need more weight. I will attempt to goop up anything I can, like just trying to reach down and like as we're kind of being drugged backwards, if I can just become like a ramp and or, and or scoop to just let things fill the back of the truck. You're trying to s scoop random forest debris into the into his tail. I, I like it. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, roll roll yeah. chance. Let's see how effective you are. Dude, well, I'm at a 10 right 10 now. now. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> Raindrop noticing what he's doing is also going to try to do so. That is a good idea. Raindrop, go ahead and roll chance as well to do the same thing. No. 92. No. 65. No for both of you. Oh, and right. their and their attempts to try to grab debris, both of them are yanked out of the back of the truck. All right. And he's All even right. lighter now as his wheels start to come off the ground hopping occasionally and only barely touching the forest floor. Can I try to affect their luck? I have a die, special die to do that with. All right, if you can use your die to do so, just tell us what you've done. Okay, let me use it first. It'll be in the chat. Come on, baby. Don't fail me now. <laughs> um, I rolled the golden ratio. Um, all of meets across rectangles. Um, oh, yeah. Squares of any, live, any number in the Fibonacci sequence is directly involved. If it meets any of the following conditions. Uh, circles or ovals are evolved if you count the wheels of Drifter the Truck. Then I have botched. I have sucked. <laughs> it botched it. Yeah. Okay, well, uh... The, what do you call it? The irrational die is irrational and dangerous. Okay, so what I'm going to say that that did is she pulled out her token and she attempted to use uh, this lucky little keepsake she'd been keeping to uh to help her out whenever the times are tough to help her along but instead as she went to uh to try to like you know rub it for good luck it fell out of her grip and it tumbles down off of the owl and goes free falling through the air all that's left is you drifter you're the only one who hasn't tried to do anything in this situation uh, we start calling out wrap around a tree I was going. I was going to say, is there anything that's stationary that I can drive around to? You have. Um, I'm going to put your chance challenge at hard because you barely, barely even have contact with the forest floor. But if you'd like to try to drive in a way that will put you, uh, hang you up on something, or drive around the trunk of a tree, or under a bush, or something that will slow this owl down enough that you he'll keep him from picking you up off of the floor. I need to roll low, right? Well, currently you are at an 80, so you need to roll lower. How does the 21 sound? Excellent. So, oh, uh, in a last-ditch effort to stop this maddened, maddened train of uh, pain from getting even worse than it already was, <laughs> Drifter spins his wheels as hard as he possibly can. And even though he can't really get a very strong uh, uh, connection to the ground, he manages to just tap that ground enough at that speed with his wheels spinning as hard as possible to kind of change directions so that he goes up under a bush 
and the bush is not going to hold for long but for a moment the owl is stopped and the, and and drifter is aware that his uh his his uh back tailgate gets bent a little bit as the uh as the owl is is bam just stopped in mid flight and continues to flap its wings hard to stay adri- to stay aloft are we able to catch up to him uh, at this point it, since he has stopped it yes can okay, we shout so, to socks to jump off the owl? Yeah, I would be shouting, "Jump off! I'm gonna cut it!" All right, I'm gonna jump off because I don't think I can be hurt from any distance because I'm a plush. That is correct. You cannot be hurt by jumping from this distance. This particular ah, about I hop off. All right, Am you I jump off. And I prepare I my know. rocks in case I need to distract the owl. The owl seems to have other ideas in mind. As you jump off of its back and attempt to tumble to the ground to safety, its talon whips out towards you. Make a chance roll to escape. Me? Yes. All right. Ninety-two. Ba ba. Well, since I was planning on throwing my pebbles towards the owl to try to possibly distract it while he was trying to catch her, can I do that to Im- impact her escape? If you can successfully um, hit the owl with the pebbles, we'll say that might do something uh, depending on the roll. Fortunately, I've earned my way all the way back up to 80, so... eighty. Four. This is this has been a very uh, rough experience for everybody today. Uh, the the owl grabs hold of the plush fox as she attempts to jump away, and grips her very tightly. You take a stuff of damage, socks the fox, as the talons do not seem to uh, to be friendly at all. Um, there there it does not seem to be gripping you gently, um, and the owl continues to beat its wings very hard. Uh, the line starts to kind of make funny noises, and Drifter's not sure how long he can keep his tailgate on. If it Y'all hurry up! Like that. The bush also um, shakes and rattles. Load up and fire at the beast. I'm aiming for the leg if possible. All right. Trying to make it drop her. We'll give everybody one more chance to, to try to do something here. Uh, Maid's going to attack. Uh, so go ahead and make an attack. Chance. This is a normal difficulty. You're stationary. Shooting up a owl that's not really moving. Aim for that big of wire. You know what? Feedback. I'm all, all the way back up to 80, right? What was it? I'm all the, all the way back up to 80, right? Um, I'm going to try to turn into a raven with my tra- plastic transformation leaf. Okay. So I, I, I didn't do it. I rolled a 43, so there's a 4 involved in my failure. Okay. All right, then. Um, you shoot socks. Uh, socks takes two stuff of damage. Uh, the friendly fire uh, catches her squarely uh-huh. in the back. Sixteen tears. Drifter, talk to the owl. Drifter, spin around the tree a bunch more. By the way, you talked Elgato to to leaving. So just so you know. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'll holler, "Hey, bird!" The uh, the owl's head just spins around. And looks at you without the rest of his body moving. Yeah, and it just, hey. his big luminescent eyes stare down at you. How many... We're not your enemy. I don't think Tell him we're not a cares. No. And we're not food. No. No. You I'm just full of food. stuffing. But you are full of stuffing. At least these are. But we have no flavor. I won't eat. You're going to make a nest out of me? Yes. Actually, you can't talk to the owl, so... Oh, darn. No. No. How about we help you find stuff and that's not my friends? Uh, make a chance roll. 
as you attempt to be wow. more diplomatic than uh, than attempting to, be a nest. to attack the owl. Sixty. Okay, uh, I do believe what was the last thing you tried to do. I, I succeeded on the last one. I have. That was at eighty. Yeah, forty. So that would put you at forty. Yeah. So Stay that on. was a little too high. Yep. The owl says, "No, I already have it. Thanks." And it it. Uh, it starts to pull away. The line strains a little more, and the book sh the bush shakes against the strain of the massive beast pulling against it. And I do believe we have uh, raindrops still throwing pebbles. I'm gonna throw and, more pebbles at him. And I hate to go straight for a token here, but this is getting ridiculous. Um, I want to try to turn into a raven. And I've got a fifty, so that is a pass. All right, your pebbles uh, successfully. Um, surprise and agitate the owl. Uh, um, are you attempting to harm it, by the way? No, I'm just trying to distract it so that I socks just, can get away. You're just pelting him with them, not necessarily harming him with them. Okay, so yeah, you, you pelt the owl with the pebbles, and it definitely gets his attention and distracts it. Um, we'll say that your uh, chance has now, your chance attempt has now become easy due to this. Uh, the, the effects of a, a massive assist, basically. So, Socks the Fox, you turn into a raven and you attempt to get free of the talon, I assume? Yep. All right. All right, I guess it's just another chance roll. I did not pass the last one. I'm up at 80. Um, roll 2d10. What do we have? Seventeen. Very Yay. good. You clear your way of the talon by yanking free, and the the change in size and shape seems to help too. As uh, socks the fox suddenly turns into socks the raven, and uh, maybe because it was a hasty transformation, and and uh, socks wasn't thinking of a particular raven, she looks like a giant plush raven with button eyes <laughs> and cool and uh, and like feathery wings that end in lines of thread. And uh, as she pulls away from the uh, from the owl, the owl kind of looks at her for a second, and it's whoo, whoo, and then the line snaps, twang, and the towel the owl um, seems to give up on socks, and starts flying away. At least it seems to be flying away. It flies higher. Mm. Hey. What would the group like to do now? Well, we need to, to land. Have a look at the um, at Drifter's fin or his bumper area to make sure he's okay, because we may need that line repaired again. And the line certainly itself don't. Been, yep, the line itself has been snapped, but the uh, the bumper is only bent. You could probably bend it back if you had, oh, say, somebody with some utility tools. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I can take care of that. I can fix that in, in a little bit. It'll be fine. Uh, we, we should we focus on trying to find Anne and figure out why she's coming in here so we can get in and out oh, quickly. I can sure. I can track from air now. What an idea! Maybe somebody that has can tie my two halves of the line back together. Ha ah. and the majority of it's like around on the owl, right? Oh, that's true. Oh, I need to find a replacement then. As we're, we'll, we'll worry about finding that. We're we're good at locating things. We had a lot of line down underneath the playground, the, the yard. Wait, no, is that what it was called? Is it called the grounds? The grounds, yes. In the underground, we find Anne, and we can get back there. We can get you some more line, and I'll I'll fix your bumper. All right. Uh, is Sox uh, going higher to scout, like she mentioned before, or is she going down to the group to talk to them? Um, I'm going to go down to the group for now, talk to them, and suggest that I go fly up there and scout, since I'm already a plush um, Raven now. You find your flight a bit awkward, but can manage. Uh, you're not sure how much longer you can keep this up. It seems to strain the usual transformation 
you, you might have like half the time available to you. All right. Um, then I won't waste too much time. I will just say um, I'm going to spend as much time as I can scouting. And then come back. I'm sure I'm going to fall from the sky while I'm scouting, but hey, that's okay. You uh, you break the tree line, and almost the moment you do, you see the owl again. Um, it's doing Ooh. slow circles above your group. It, do you think that Anne was maybe going to the nest because somebody else, that some other Wittershin that she cared about is stuck in the nest? Maybe she's trying to rescue somebody. I'm trying to... I had probably don't hear that as a character, but um, do I no, see Anne? Much too far away. But you look down and you see the tree canopy. Unfortunately, uh, if you, you, you can either go way up high and scout more territory and see a lot of the forest, which there's a lot of it, uh, especially for something as small as yourself. It's, it's enormous. Um, on the other side of it, you see more buildings, much bigger buildings than what you've seen so far. Uh, the people really built big buildings that way. And then off to the other side, you can uh, you can see even more buildings, but they're not quite as tall. Uh, down, let's say, to the east, uh, to okay. the north and west is where the big buildings are. To the south and west is the grounds. But if you want to actually find Anne, you'll have to go under the tree canopy. All right, and, let's go under the tree canopy. Um, but you do notice the owl seems to be circling still. And because you are a creature of the night, um, you can tell even where it's looking. It's not looking at you. It seems to be watching Raindrop. I'm going to fly down to Raindrop. I look like less threatening nest material. Yeah, I bet the what do you call? It? I bet the owl was pretty surprised. I should have asked him how many licks it takes to get to the center of a tootsie pop. <laughs> anyway, it is, but it sounds fun. Um, so I'm gonna go down to Raindrop since all her, all the owl's attention seems to be on her at the moment. Drifter, you hear a voice. Hey, you. Hey. Drifter looks around. After a few seconds, you spot it. A spotted, mottled, brown, black, and white head covered in fur is, is poked just above the ground, staring at him. If I was on Drifter, would I be able to hear it as well? You can hear it. Um, it sounds kind of like... Rrr, rrr. Hmm. I'd be looking at it and be like, what is that, Drifter? Uh-oh, we don't have any sound from you, Anthony. Yeah, I'm pushed to the top. Hey. There you here? are. Yeah. Uh, it's an animal. Uh... And it's talking to me. What's it saying? It says, hey. And I said, hey, bye. Hmm. Good choice. She's going to get her. She's going to get her if she keeps staying up there. Come on. Hey, come on. He's nodding towards the hole he popped his head out of. And you notice he's he's uh he's got like a big tunnel behind him. And he kind of like backs back into it. Okay, so... If I holler, can uh, can she hear me? At uh, at Socks the Fox as a raven? Uh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, she could probably hear you if you start shouting as loud as you can. Okay, I'm going to start uh, flashing my headlights and hollering. And... All right, I'll go over pretty much immediately. Okay. All right. So you've in indicated that the owl is watching Raindrop. So I'm going to try to get under something so that he can't grab me off the ground easily. 
Rick Raindrop, come come get over here and we've we found a friend and they are telling us to go this way. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I'm gonna go you are there. Our friend, right, Mr. Animal? He is our friend, right? I look to Drifter when I ask. Drifter, when, when this question is posed, uh, the creature seems to snort and, and make a strange set of huffing no noises that you translate as laughter. Hmm. I don't know. Can we trust you? That's ambiguous. I don't know. You, you trust a badger. badger, badger. No. I don't know. Are badgers bad? It sounds like it's in your name. Oh, wait, I can't understand him. I can't understand him either, but I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Do what, do what is suggested of me to do. Are you guys kind of like cram yourselves down into the tunnel? It smells very earthy down here, for obvious reasons. Oh, I'm very familiar with these smells. Uh, you, could, you could jam yourself inside a drifter as long as you stay hunkered down enough that yeah, you can... Uh, that you, you're not standing above him because Drifter can barely get inside the hole and manage to. Don't, don't. Pop I'm gonna go in the hole. Yeah. All right. So... You you guys pop into the hole. Um. The the dragger the the badger makes that huffing noise again and and he starts kind of like paddling along down the turn. <laughs> come come on, come on. I'm assuming he's asking us to follow him, so I'll. Follow behind. Not to sound ungrateful, but why are you helping us? The badger seems to stop and then uh, turns its beady eyes back at you for a moment. Just kind of stares at you, then then looks forward and shuffles off again. Apparently, apparently deciding not to answer. <laughs> You're quiet again, Anthony. I've got my headlights on. Hmm. Your headlights on. Okay, uh, as you guys continue uh, traveling Hello. on, as you guys continue traveling on with with uh, Drifter's headlights showing the way, you eventually get to a large area that opens up into a cavern, and you see a lot of badgers here now. There's a little family of them. They're all kind of. Uh, you see several young rolling around, playing with each other. Uh, another large ba badger, uh, a little larger than the one that brought you down here, actually. Is watching you carefully as you come in. I turn there back be, into a fox. There seem to be several other tunnels leading out from this main chamber. Boing. Uh, if you look up, you see uh, roots running along along the ceiling. You get the impression that you're underneath a tree. Oh. Flashlight up. She can't get you down here. Nope. Thank you. I really appreciate your help. Not helping you. Don't like her. Spiting the owl. <laughs> Ate some of my young, she did. I am Green so thing. sorry. I heard somebody say once that someone who's not your friend and not your not your friend's not friend too is is your friend. I give the badger a hug. That sounds really complicated. But, no, I don't remember exactly. The, ba the badger, the badger immediately like like backs up and even bars its teeth at you. No, don't touch me. Mm, I'm sorry. I didn't know you wouldn't like that. I just, I'm inclined to try to help feel better, help people feel better. So, uh, gain a stuffing for your attempt to help the badger. But you do get the impression that he's, he's not a cuddly type. All right. In fact, it seems like they're barely tolerating your presence. The larger badger seems very unhappy with your presence, in fact. Oh. It continuously snarls. So you don't like the owl. And because the owl was trying to harm us, you just... You robbed the owl of what it wanted. And we just have to benefit from that. The badger thinks for a long few months. And then finally, yep. I'm going to well, go I'm... back out the hole 
and just stick my head out and look around. I'm not that happy about this place. All I right. Mean, I'll tell the badger, uh, or well, I mean, through Drifter, I'll tell the badger that we were chasing after a redheaded stuff, a redheaded doll like one of us. Um, and we don't know why she came here, um, but we're just trying to catch up to her. And do they know where she might have gone and or what the best way to proceed into the forest is safely to get past the owl? All right. Uh, if uh, Drifter translates all that, um, for one, Socks, when you poke your head out of the, the hole, uh, you don't see or hear anything. Seems very quiet out here, but you do hear very minute woods sounds. You know, the ones that disappeared just before the owl showed up. Um, mm. Seems like they're kind of coming back slowly. Sounds of croaking frogs and chirping crickets and things like that. That means things are starting to return to occasion safe out here. I know that because I'm an undersider. I'm actually vermin the... kin. I don't know how that changes how much I can, what I can understand of people. You, I'm sorry. Say that again. The type of undersider I am is vermin kin, so I don't know uh, how, how that, what that changes as far as who I can understand. Okay. Um, actually, I didn't see it an expansion of the rules concerning types of undersiders, but I'll have to look into that with you later. All right. Uh, as far as vermin can, that does sound like it's related to vermin, like maybe rats, uh, like you guys have encountered some rats in the pre previously, but we'll look mm -hmm. into that later. Uh, as far as the badger and his response to your questions, uh, the badger shakes its head and says, yeah, redheaded one, saw her. She took off that way. It points. You know a shortcut we can use to catch her, maybe? Plus, that'll get us out of your hair faster. Well, the badger's brow screws up for a few moments, and it seems confused, and then finally it shakes its head. No. No. Uh-oh, you can't swim, I don't think. don't have enough line to try to shoot across. Can you swim? I can't. I can't. I don't think any of us can. I can could. It, well, I'm not here anymore. I'm outside. I don't want her to get you. So I wouldn't suggest swimming. Well, then we'll just go by the other safe route, which, which would be not swimming. Uh, it will it will describe to you, go north until you find a great big tree whose winding black branches extend to the heavens in all directions. No leaves. Big dead thing. Then turn yourself off to the left and head west. Eventually you'll come to the people buildings. That's where she's gone. Very confused. She's gone from one people building to another people building. Hmm. Well, we'll I guess we'll go now. The badger nods. Okay, bye. Yes. Thanks for messing with Owl. Seriously, my mate's gonna bite you. Go. Hiding inside the cab. Everybody, follow in. in we're gone. I know where we're not wanted. Well, sure enough, uh, the the giant female badger seems to be getting more fancy and kind of inching towards you guys. Okay, I will get I'm in the car. So I don't need to get bit. Yep. All right, you guys make your ways out, and uh, the the large female badger seems to relax that you're on your way uh, and moving away from her children. Um, as you make your way uh, up the tunnel that was pointed to, 
uh, you eventually come back out into the uh, into the top side, and you see more forest spreading out in front of you. So now, if you remember correctly, your, your directions were to go to go due north until you came across a large dead tree that looked black, and then you were to turn left or at west and head towards the people buildings. Okay. Well, let's follow those directions. I'm keeping my eyes out up above just to try to see if the winged one comes back. And I'm listening to see that the... Make sure that as soon as the forest starts to chi to still, I'll be able to tell everybody we need to take cover. All right. Um, gain a stuff for doing a good job of listening. And Drifter, gain a stuff for giving everybody a ride so far. Yeah. Or actually, gain two stuff because, man, you've been doing a lot of backpacking with your fellow dream he team has. in the back. So as you guys travel along, um, looking and listening for problems, uh, let's give you an unpenalized chance uh, to notice something, raindrop. Okay. I do not notice it because... No, hang on. Yeah. I rolled a 67 and I was at 80. Uh, sorry, I was at 41. Okay. You hear nothing and everything's going very smoothly. It's uh, it's almost too perfect as you guys uh, continue your uh, journey northwards. As you get uh, th through quite a patch of woodland, which actually took you guys uh, a lot of time to traverse because you don't have your your grapple trick anymore. Uh, and we have to be, uh, Dritcher said to be very careful to raise his wheels up occasionally to get over things that are, that are uh, impeding his ability to roll over the woods. Um, and the rest of you could probably help occasionally give me a lift. And of course, made yeah. having the same difficulty. He can't really walk out here. Um, once you've made some distance traveling, you all hear March one, two, three, four. March one, two, three, four. March one, two, three, four. Can I get out yeah. my button and see if I can't see where that's coming from? Okay. Oh, you you retrieve your button and you look through it carefully, and due to its magnification, you immediately realize what it is. It's a long. Um, and by the way, the only person who understands the March one, two, three, four is Drifter. Um, you see a long row of ants that are carrying leaves uh, up above them with their mandibles. And one of them is off to the side going, March 1, 2, 3, 4. March 1, 2, 3, 4. Waving his antenna around. Let's try not to step on those. All right. None of you step on the ants. And they continue along their business if, uh, if nothing else happens. And... Uh, would you like to continue journeying from there? Yeah. Does anybody want to talk to them? Well, maybe they've seen um, Anne and can confirm that we are on the right direction. So I'll drive up to the, I guess, the leader. All right, you uh, you drive over to the leader, and uh, only when you get very close does he turn around and regard you. He's still <coughs> saying it, though. March one, two, three, four. Hi. What? March one, two, three, four. Have you seen a red-headed dog? Yes, March one, two, three, four. Can you tell me which way she went? That way. March one, two, three, four. Thank you. All right, you notice that the direction he pointed in was not the direction that you've been told to go in by the badger. And in fact, it's heading, it's heading directly westwards from your current point. Well, I guess we trust the people who saw her, <laughs> saw her last. I agree. All right, so this episode of Lost in the Woods is brought to you by all of you guys' chance rolls. Okay. All right, let me go grab Thankfully, that. I failed my last one. 
<clears throat> You're smiling. Did you? Does that mean you made it? Good. I made it with a twenty-four. Um, I don't think I made it because I made it last time, and this time I got a sixty-nine. All right. I did so not make it. I was at forty-six, and I got fifty-one. Do we? Did we at least get two people making it? Two of us got it, and two of us got fours on the successes. On the success, four. Okay, so that's double the value towards these. Uh, yeah, you definitely got this extended conflict challenge down. All right, so everybody, you removed the enough necessary stuff in the conflict, and you managed to not get lost in the woods. Um, as you turn west and head and find a uh, small gully leading into a stream, Get the master key. I hear a drum roll. Yeah, me too. It might be my drop. fan. It does is sound it, a little bit like a fan. Is it oscillate? Yes. That's it. It also goes. Yeah. All right, so what do you do when you come across this stream? Is it deep? Mm. How deep is it? Can we tell? Uh, the waters are dark, uh, especially because oh. it's still night. Can we look and see if there might be like a downed tree or something? You look around and you don't see a downed tree. Is it a, it's a moving creek? Is it a fast moving creek? Or? For a winter shin, it's probably pretty quick. Do we For see any sign of of Anne, uh, like on our own, just like any footprints, and if we were to walk down the bank, excuse me, the bank, could we find any like a footprint or anything like that from maybe seeing where she's been through here? Good point. You look around for tracks, and sure enough, you find Anne's tracks. They run along the the shore all the way up to the water and disappear. Okay. Um. Okay. Just um. According to the rules, yes, I can talk to insects. Rackets and spires, and apparently I can also store them inside myself. Awesome. <laughs> can I? So do I want to my... recruit some ants? Yes, I do. I was gonna say, can I get my button out and see if I can't see footsteps on the other side of the bank, since from across from where they disappeared? That's a that's a good strategy. You pull out the button and you look through the button, and uh, sure enough. There on the other side of the of the uh, the stream it are another set of footprints, almost like she just walked over it. This is very strange. She's not behaving like a Witterson. She should have somebody with her. What do you mean she's not behaving like a Witterson? Well, I mean, she's she just mean? she's running away from us, and she's just. What if she go? What if she found? What if another girl needed her? I, maybe, I, I, maybe the little <laughs> girl we met wasn't her little girl. Maybe, the, maybe that was the wrong little girl. I think maybe she might be like between two different. The, it's just a theory, really, but. She might be between two different girls. Like maybe she was lost and another girl picked her up. And now both of them are... I don't know, I don't have any evidence for that, but it feels that way. <clears throat> well, how did she get across? Maybe it's not that deep here. <coughs> How much string do I have left? We didn't really concrete uh, how much you had in the first place. So uh, oh. roll a d10. He had slightly less than enough to go all the way up the trash can and halfway back down. Slow good? No. Because I rolled a one. You had have... one foot. You have <laughs> you have one foot of string. Yep. Okay, we can work with that. So 
Who's the lightest out, out, out of the group? Least floaty, probably. Let's see. I'm the least buoyant. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do we need, can we, we don't need air to breathe, do we? No. No, but we could get, we don't, but getting wet isn't necessarily something we want to do. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling Leroy Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Are you thinking you can jump this? I don't know about jumping, but I might just drop straight into it. <laughs> Are there any sticks or logs or rocks at all that we could move or that are already there that would make this a, an easier attempt? I mean, if we've walked down and we found where she crossed, like... Are you talking about trying to make a bridge? Yes. Either, yeah, like either can we make a bridge or like block up part of it so that we just have something to... Like if there's say a Ramp. big rock, how wide is this? Across it, not even for us to you know make a bridge, but just something to keep us from getting washed downstream. You know, how wide is this? The stream is is roughly one mile wide to a Wittershin, which is approximately thirty feet. Oh no! Could I fly Maybe from over? Ramp. You get a feeling looking at the water as it's moving that if you try to use stones and sticks, you um, if unless the water is very shallow, it's not going to work. Could I fly them over? Could you fly them over? Well, you had trouble lifting yourself when you were flying, so even if you uh, waited long enough for the transformation to come back, why don't we throw a rock or something and just to see if we can tell how deep this water is? All right. You toss a stone. You hear a poop. Nothing. Mm. You you don't see the stone come back up or anything. It just just disappeared. Let me think here. Let me think. 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 Oh, another rock. Plump. I mean, eventually we'll have a nice little pile of rocks. We could just you step in stones. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be like 100,000 rocks out here. Chetra throws a couple of rocks and he realizes that's going to take a long time. Hmm. Can we float across? Let me think. Maybe we can find something big enough well, that we could float. Yeah, are there, yeah, like, are there any, like, pieces of bark that are available? Or are there any, um... Vines hanging from over the trees. Well, this is the this is the woods. So how about I have each of you roll a, a D10, and the lower you get, the less of what you're looking for you find. The higher you get, the more of what you're looking for. And if you roll a four, you find it in plentiful abundance. Let's go fours. I got a seven. One D10. Right, well, you were looking for bark. With your seven? Yeah. <coughs> like, yeah. Not only is there, yeah. Not only is there, is there bark on decaying trees that you could easily rip off, there's actually a few pieces of bark just laying around on the ground that you can collect. I got a two. Six looking for swingable vines from overhead trees. Okay, well, as far as swinging right over the, over the, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, but you do find vines. Okay. Make, make another, uh, so maybe we can. I didn't hear what you said, Anthony. You have to make another string for me. Um. You want to make a string from a vine? Hmm. And I got a two. It I might be a, a zero for making strings. That's actually, um, usually auto success and double double dice. So we'll just call that ten. So that's actually really good. Uh, so. You could find a lot of vines. You could probably make yourself a new uh, a new grappling hook. Uh, you might need some help crafting it. Oh, well, well, I have had some tools. I have some tools for that. I can help cut some of the fibers free when they're attached to other fibers, and we 
peel them off and and weave them together. This is going to take some time. Just you know that that part, you guys, that's going to take some time. You can like make it while. stronger, longer, better. Okay, what was what was Socks doing again with her time? Um, I was looking for a log. Looking for a log. Well, you can find logs in the woods. Um, can I push them? Let's see. Did you? Uh, well, they're very large. They're they're fallen trees. So I mean, uh, you just lack the strength, especially alone, to move something that size. I feel like Anthony's trying to say something, but he's muted again. I'm an idiot. Uh oh. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go up to the to the edge of the water and just call out, "Hello!" Can anybody hear me? Uh oh, did we lose somebody? Uh -oh. We lost cat. Yeah, we okay. lost cat. All right. After a few moments, you see some bubbles moving along under the water. And uh, after a few moments, a face pokes out just above the water. Ooh. Hello. Hi. Are you a frog? The face is, uh, it's fish. Oh, it's frog. a fish. Is it a big fish? It doesn't look particularly large, no. Hmm. We need help. Can you help us? The fish just stares in a fish-eyed way. Can you help us or find somebody to help us get across this river? Why? We got to find somebody and help them. They're lost. Why not on that side? I'm sorry? Why not on that side? The because fish nods its head, indicating the side you're already on. Because they're on that side. Why not swim? I, I, I don't have legs. Ah, it is unfortunate you are not a fish. Or and flippers. Then it, then it swims away. <laughs> Crap. It's unfortunate you're not a fish. It would be helpful would right it, now. Here, here's another question. When looking up, do we notice whether or not the tree branches above us connect above the river? Hmm. Let's say, let's leave that to chance. Uh, a no penalty chance roll just to see. Uh, let's see. Since you're the one who brought it up, go ahead and roll it, Cat. All right, I'm trying to. Twelve, and I was in the twenties. So they are separated by several feet, but there are two trees nearby that almost touch each other. They're extending we... branches at the very at the very thinnest parts. You um, squirrel would be able to handle this. Looking up, I point out the. The bridge above the, basically the the branch bridge, to my companion Widdershin. Oh, well, that looks like I a don't... good way to go across. Dangerous. We Very fall. dangerous. Yes. Good if we don't. But we do have a little bit of string, so we could maybe. to each other and one foot that's not a lot is it i'm i'm trying to think thank you too so maybe if we we tied a little bit around each other's wrist we could help balance one another I wonder if I tied everybody to me and I turned to a fish, if I could fish my way across. You will check your, your leaf token and you feel that its powers are currently still recovering. 
Oh, okay. Um, let me what see time here. of day is it? I mean, it's we've been at this for a while, so I mean, is it getting to be daylight depending, or? Depending on how much time you decide to spend on that vine, it's either very late at night or about to be morning. Hmm. Because so they could always make a tree. shelter for us, but that's still letting that doll get it, letting her get away farther. Because the longer it takes us to cross this stream, it could have just flown on the owl until it carried us across the stream. Okay. <laughs> I me. wonder if the reason the badger told us to go the way he did was because he knew we couldn't swim. Wait a minute. What if we uh, we have somebody who can talk to animals? Why don't we recruit a large animal that can cross it? Like, are there deer out here? Are there are there large animals? We could ride a deer. I hope I can find a turtle. I hate to backtrack, but I think raindrop might be right. I think if we go back the way the badger said, we'll find our way across. We'll lose a little bit of time. I'm but... sorry. Let's do and what I'll, the badger said. You can be uh, working on my new stream. <laughs> yeah. Badger said only you. Oh, are All we right. making stream out of his, um, out of the vines? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Okay. So... You guys climb back up in the drifter and take off again. Uh, I'm going to assume the maid is, is busily working on a new vine string. And as you guys drive, uh, the, the night sky gradually starts to recede towards dawn. As eventually, in the distance ahead of you, you can see a large blackened tree extending its dark branches towards the heavens. As you approach the tree, right before you're about to make your turn, a, a large crashing sound occurs is an enormous winged form lands on the top of the, the tree and looks down at you. Ooh. And I climbed the tree. Now, everyone. <laughs> you oh. love cliffhangers, don't you? Yep. I love them. This is a good time for a cliffhanger. <laughs> so we will discuss what happens with the owl uh, next session. Everybody, okay. I look forward to meeting you again on Thursday. Uh, and if we had anything we wanted to bring up, other than how awesomely adorable that cat is over there um then feel free to do so anybody have any questions sorry i'm late we're uh, getting I, pounded he gave me a, he gave me a notice that they were going to be having a lot of a lot of overtime that's why we went ahead and scrambled to uh, have me control shifter i uh i tried to emulate it to as best i could and mostly when i'm in control of a character um, and I'll say this for any campaign I run, usually I'll just be defensive with the character and try not to let them die. Um, but, you know, it, it would really suck if you died off camera. So try, try to make it if well, you can. Yeah, yeah, no TPKs well, we're, here. We're... We've, we've, got, we've got inspections like constantly off and on this week and next week, and we're trying to get the tower done at this new stadium. So it sucks. All right, anybody else have any questions about the game? Um, nope, I just Not want to say tonight. that we will should have this uh, up on YouTube in an hour. Excellent. Thank you very so, much, Elena. I will post I... the link. Um, you know what? It's usually posted in our Discord. So, if, But if you're watching, um, if you guys are wanting to link people to YouTube, just watch it pop up and um, link that. Because I don't know where else I could put it for everybody to see it. But, okay. yeah, it'll be there. All right. Do I'm we get any stuff? Uh, yes, everybody. At no the chances. end of the session, we're gonna, I'm going to award everyone uh, with three chance points to use in your characters as you see fit. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I and that. also, I, um, I was notified that we received an updated um, keepsakes uh, character... Uh, an updated book for the keepsakes. So uh, that was in the uh, chat. So if you missed that, Anthony, I could tell by the look on your face you missed it. So it's in Is the that 64-page book that came in a couple yeah. days ago? Yeah. So yes. if you want to look through that, that will have much more detailed rulings on how things work. And I have five chance. 
So we will we will all want to study that and make sure that we're as on top of that as we can. All right, yep, everybody. that's where I got the verminkin from. The what do you call it? statement on verminkin. Good. Uh -huh. good. So uh, we will have to backtrack a little bit. Maybe we'll, when we come across ants or something like that again, we'll have to make sure your character can grab, scoop them up. Oh, I'm yeah. going for spiders. You're going to go for spiders. Awesome. Yes. No. That's kind of creepy, man. I hate spiders. I love right, spiders. Thank you for joining the game. I hope you enjoyed it. And yes, everybody have a good night. Yep. And uh, peace. Have a good peace one. Peace out, everybody. Later.